Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're requested to switch off your mobile phones, please. I'm Archana Naresh. And I'm Abhishek Acharya. And we'll be your hosts for the formal proceedings this morning. On behalf of the Department of Economic Affairs, Ministry of Finance, Government of India, we extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this International Conference on Economic Policies for Emerging Economies, which has been organized in partnership with the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy. The week of 12 to 17 December 2011 has been declared as the Delhi Economics Conclave and is marked by contiguous seminars being hosted by Delhi School of Economics, Confederation of Indian Industries, and Indian Statistical Institute. Today is the highlight of the conclave where the plenary sessions will take place. We have an August gathering for the event which includes a broad cross-section of the society encompassing eminent personalities from the field of economics, government, trade and industry, financial, social sector, media and research. Before we begin the program, we warmly and respectfully welcome Sri Pranam Mukherjee, Honorable Finance Minister, Dr. Montek Singh Aluwalia, Deputy Chairman, Planning Commission, Dr. C. Rangarajan, Chairman, Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council, Nobel Laureate and Bharat Ratna Holder, Professor Amartya Sain, Sri S. S. Palanimanikam, Honorable Minister of State for Revenue, Sri R. Gopalan, Secretary, Department of Economic Affairs, Ministry of Finance, Dr. Richard Freeman, Professor of Economics, Harvard University. Dr. Kaushik Basu, Chief Economic Advisor, Ministry of Finance. Dr. Govinda Rao, Director, National Institute of Public Finance and Policy. Other distinguished invitees, friends from media, and members of audience. We begin the conference by felicitating the dignitaries in an eco-friendly way by presenting a small money plant and a memento. We call upon Ms. Gayatri Nair to felicitate the Honorable Finance Minister. Ms. Soyam Prabhapani is requested to come on stage, please, to felicitate Deputy Chairman, Planning Commission. We now call upon Sri Rangit Ghosh to felicitate Professor Amartya Sen. Ms. Shweta is requested to come on stage, please, to felicitate the Honorable Minister of State for Revenue. We request Sri Jagdish Kumar to felicitate Dr. C. Rangarajan, Chairman, Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. We call upon Sri Prasant to facilitate Sri R. Gopalan, Secretary, Department of Economic Affairs, Ministry of Finance. Uh, we request Sri Prasanna Salyan to please come on stage to felicitate Dr. Richard Freeman, Professor of Economics, Harvard University. Sri Mukesh to come on stage, please, to felicitate Dr. Kaushik Basu, Chief Economic Advisor, Ministry of Finance. We request 
Mr. Mudit Saxena, to please come up on stage to felicitate Professor Govinda Rao, Director, National Institute of Public Finance and Policies. We now request Shri Pranam Mukherjee, Honorable Finance Minister, to inaugurate the conference by lighting the lamp. May we invite Ms. Bidisha Chaudhary, Director, IES Division, to assist the Honorable Finance Minister and the dignitaries in lighting the lamp, please. Before we move on to the plenary discussions, we request Dr. Kaushik Basu, Chief Economic Advisor, to deliver the opening remarks. Honorable Finance Minister, distinguished members on the dais, distinguished members in the audience, um, it's really a pleasure for me to welcome you. Uh, having been a researcher all my life, I've lived in environments with no bosses typically. However, now that I'm the advisor to the finance minister, I do have a boss, that's the finance minister. And I've had in some sense one more boss when I was doing my PhD. My PhD advisor effectively was my boss, and that's Amartya Sen. which means that all the bosses I've ever had in my life are here on the dais now gathered together, which is a bit of a nerve-wracking thing for me, but also a source of great pleasure and joy for me today. There are participants who have come from all over the world, uh, from the US, UK, Germany, Singapore, Bangladesh. They include economists, heads of banks and corporations, and policymakers. There is the Finance Minister of Israel, His Excellency here in the audience. There is the Finance Minister of Trinidad and Tobago with us. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to this international conference. Last year, we had started this event in the form of a mini conference where Michael Spence was the main speaker. After seeing the enthusiasm for the event, we decided to convert it into a slightly larger conference. As we planned and worked on the program, the scope of the event grew and grew. It has now become a humongous creature organized as the, under the umbrella conclave, which we are calling the Delhi Economics Conclave 2011, with satellite conferences being organized by the Delhi School of Economics, 
the Confederation of Indian Industry and the Indian Statistical Institute spread over a full week. The Delhi School has already started with its conference. And today's event is being organized by the Ministry of Finance and the National Institu Institute of Public Finance and Policy. I hope this conference will be valuable input for policy making, not just for India, but emerging economies. These are difficult times for the world. The recent meeting of the leaders of EU did bring some cheer, but we have to remember that what has been announced is not a treaty. It is basically a gentleman's agreement led by, uh, actually not a gentleman, by a lady, uh, the German leader of Germany, trying to get an agreement ultimately in place. And there are already some murmurs of protest. The French left has protested against some of the provisions of the agreement. Even within Eurozone, Austria has expressed displeasure. From the response of the market, we know that it is very, very clear that Europe still stands on the edge of a precipice. As a consequence, all economies are forced to adopt brace position. And it is not easy to make policy in brace position. The turmoil in the global economy is, of course, affecting India. We have had a tough fight against inflation. This is beginning to show signs of slowing down. I do expect food inflation within a month to go down to below 3%. But in the meantime, we are beginning to face problems with our growth trajectory. The latest monthly industrial growth figure that we have got pertaining to the month of October shows that this sector actually shrank. We must not overreact to this since this is just one month's figure and also because this particular index is extremely volatile, we do know that. But at the same time, it will be a grave mistake to sit back and put it all down to in the international situation. We must introspect and see what we may have done wrong and how we can alter this. Given the news over the last two or three months, I believe that India is in a situation where growth needs to take be the focus of our policy, at least in the immediate run next few months, that has to be the focus. We have to pull out of the industrial slowdown as quickly as we can. Otherwise, there is a risk of unemployment rising. So this is something that we will be turning to very seriously. Friends, in the long run, the economy's, any economy's success depends in large measure, I believe, on how a nation thinks. This is where research plays a major role. While in all emerging economies, and certainly in India, 